to Reading on the Rock. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Reading on the Rock here at Covenant United Methodist Church in Rochester. I'm Reverend Ann Kemper, and I'm excited to announce the start of a new series of children's literature. Now, for you parents or grandparents, adult who's helping your child access Reading on the Rock, thank you. Because this series is about sharing God's love and care, only it's with a twist. The books that we will read for the next six weeks are books that have either been banned or challenged in some way. And at Covenant, we believe it's okay to ask questions about books that we've read. And we want our children to find how people share God's love and care in different ways. Now, tonight's challenged story might surprise you. It's called The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. I'm Miss Rebecca, and I'm glad that you're joining us for a new series of Reading on the Rock, Share God's Love and Care. And tonight, our book is going to be about taking care of the earth, and our readers are Bunny and Tim. Thank you, Thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks for having Thank us. you for having us. So what are you reading for us tonight? We'll be reading The Lorax. Do you know who that's by? Dr. Seuss. And it's published by Random House. Okay, well, let's get to it. All right. The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing excepting old crows is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the old end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old onceler still lives there. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the onceler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum cold under the roof where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffered moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snub, his secret strange hole in his groovulous glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Slup, down slups the whisper my phone to your ear and the old onceler's whispers are not very clear since they have to come down through a snurgly hose and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the Swomi Swans rang out in space. One morning, I came to this glorious place. And I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright-colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown baraboots frisking about in their baraloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, 
and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterly milk. <laughs> I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my car. In no time at all, I'd built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill, and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft, and I knitted a sneed. All the instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked and I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him as hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle a tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there is no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thneed. A thneed is a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat but it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets or cartons, or cover the bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. This is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along and he thought that the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for 398. I laughed at the Lorax, you poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him, be quiet if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunzler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche, turn left at Weekaukin, sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all in the factory I built, the whole Wunsner family was working full tilt. We were all knitting needs, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh baby, oh how the business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffula trees at one smacker. We were making needs four times as fast as before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped. I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbalots who played in the shade in their barbalot suits and happily lived eating truffle of fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle of fruit to grow round, and my poor barbalutes are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, my boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger. So, bigger I got. I biggered my factory. I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons. I biggered the loads of the feeds I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. 
I am the Lorax, he coughed and he whiffled. He sneezed and he sniffled. He snargled, he sniffled. Lancelor, he cried with a cruffless croak. Lancelor, you're making such schmogulous smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly a month or a year to escape the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup. Also schloppity schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you. You dirty old onceler man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the larynx. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you. I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffle trees into needs, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an ax on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall the very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, every one, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my car as they drove away under the smoke smuggler stars. Oh, all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax, and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad, backwards glance, as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face, when he heisted himself and took leave of this place, through a hole in the smog, without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks, with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I couldn't guess. But that was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried, and worried away, through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, and worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the one sir, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, called the Onceler. He let something fall. It's a truffle seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds, and the truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care, give it clean water and feed it fresh air, grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack, and then the Lorax, with all of his friends, may come back. There's the Lorax. Let's hope he comes back. Well, thank you for reading that story. The Wunzler got very greedy with the, the Earth's resources. Yeah, he liked his trees a lot, those truffle trees. Yeah, but then the Lorax, the story and the Lorax leave a little bit of hope um, mm -hmm. that we can learn from this and take better care of, of the earth. What are some ways that we can do that? What could we tell the children? I love that part about unless you, someone like you, really cares an awful lot. And I think that's the first thing we can do is to care for our earth and each other. Yeah. yeah, what are some ways we can do that? Well, 
when you have your yard and maybe your gardens, some people put chemicals on them to maybe help them grow. Maybe you can ask your parents to try things that are natural, you know, compost, mm -hmm. things like that instead of chemicals. Yep. That's one thing you can do. I always carry around this big water bottle, so I always have water ready and with me, and that means that I use less bottles and cans. Mm. And you reuse that all the time, huh? I do indeed. That's cool. That's a good <laughs> idea. I like that. That's something you could do. That's easy. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, the reuse, re, what is it? Re, re, recycle, recycle, reduce, reduce reuse. reuse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's three R's. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. And please let us know if there's some things that you're doing right now to help take care of the earth and the things God has given us. Write us a, a little message in the comment section. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. The Lorax was challenged as a children's book because it was considered a metaphor for people's impact on the environment. It was written in a time when many did not want to hear that message. So what did you hear in this story that shared God's love and care? Was it a challenge to your ideas on the environment? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. And thank you for joining us for Reading on the Rock. Let us pray. Creating God, thank you for loving us and caring for us. And show us ways we too can love and care for others. Amen. Good night. Reading on the Rock is presented by Covenant United Methodist Church in if you like reading on the rock, please give a donation on our website, covenantroc.org.